to the next one. Students want to be motivated, and they're motivated by um, being able to do something with the language. And there's nothing more demotivating to students than being talked at by the teacher and sitting there and um, just feel things are going over their head and the teacher doesn't really connect with them. And I don't know about you, but when I, um, you know, um, when when I was in school, I always knew when it, I turned to be called on by the teacher and I was ready like to be the fourth next person and I prepared only for that. And it was so predictable what the teacher wanted to hear. It was most perform, and so I did, didn't really pay attention to the rest of the class that much. And of course, that doesn't really give you a lot of language knowledge. Can we go to the next slide? So every activity and lesson needs to count um, by preparing our listening activities very carefully so they can get the most mileage out of it. Next, please. So um, with that, I'm uh, ready to take your questions. And I don't know if somebody wants to facilitate questions or, um, you know, or um, first of all, let me also say to you that um, a lot of the information that I have presented here today is taken from what's called the WIDA. And you have the reference at the last Light, so you don't have to write down. Um, WIDA has a detailed description on every topic, every grade level, and um, every subject that you can get for free from the internet site. It's a non-profit organization. And no matter if you are in other countries in America, you can use it. And it gives you all the definitions. And I drew heavily for this presentation on um, the WIDA materials because they are awesome because um, they they make everything measurable for the teacher. So that takes a lot of work out in planning for the teachers. So um, any questions on your part? And I'll in a little bit with questions. Can everybody see and hear me? Yes, I agree, Teresa. Great presentation, full as usual. When Dr. Brody gets going, full of uh, great tips, great insights in second language acquisition. And as she said, she likes that we're focusing on specific areas. Uh, she could talk about. Uh, she has a great insights about listening for us today. Uh, any links? Well, we will have uh, before you take questions. Make sure you understand that uh, her slides will be uploaded. So you can take a look at them, you know, at your own pace. Also watching the recording again. And we'll have, uh, we should have, since I see uh, Skilvia Sylvia is here and Dr. Nelly was here a little earlier, we should have a YouTube um, video link also for today. Ah, blog. Good question, Nabila. She has a nice blog. Uh, I've been lucky to be uh, featured a few times in her blog. Could you type in uh, the blog? It looks like for Browdy. Browdy ESL dot wordpress.com also and this is just in general just put in dr crystal brody in in google or another uh, search engine and you'll see brody esl have, so if you don't remember I where's the dot of wordpress oh and uh on, on sorry on, can you hear me on facebook uh it's um going in and out now i think it's just, I think it's just where your mouth is because you're moving that's all okay so on Facebook, I have a Facebook site of Brody ESL where I post every single day. Yeah, she's she's really on Facebook a lot with good stuff, both uh, in ELT and other stuff too that she finds. Um, so definitely, you want to follow her there. Any other questions? Please come back. <laughs> she's she's here. She's not going. I'm not letting her go anywhere. <laughs> On Facebook, just look up uh, Crystal Brody or Brody ESL, and you'll find her. Brody ESL, not Crystal Brody. That's my private one. Oh. Brody ESL is a ESL site. Great. Thanks, Olivia. And that, Thanks, Olivia. <laughs> and that's also the name. And remember, folks, uh, on the class page, so uh, Crystal, you'll be going to your class page, I imagine, to interact there. Uh, you can post anything there that you like 
Um, the, the other thing, everyone, is, uh, and I need to always remember to mention this, if you ever can't find someone's link really needed, go to the About Course page because everyone's, all the presenters are hyperlinked to their main pages. So I remember putting in uh, Crystal's blog for that. Yeah, but it's yeah, a Facebook That's right. There's a lot of stuff happening in the in her group. So check it out. Sorry, go ahead, Dr. Naughty. Yeah, I'm also on Twitter. If you want to um, follow each other on Twitter, um, Roddy ESL. I, let me let me do this one more time here. Roddy ESL, um, you know, is an easy one too to remember on all social media. LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. And my other big area of interest is technology and using really cool technology to create our activities. You know. Um, making so much easier to have authentic, beautiful pictures and materials for our kids. Just check so out technology. Does she, does she belong here with us? <laughs> um, wonderful. I, I almost want people to, I mean, I'm glad you're writing these things down. We're putting them here. But I almost wanted to say, just go to the pre-class task because we want to see a lot of activity there. Um, and, you know, that way you can ask uh, questions. Uh, not that we can't now. Uh, but you might want to, obviously some people, most people are watching are watching this or will watch it asynchronously, meaning they will watch it after the live class. So they'll go to the pre-class task at different points. So if this is a topic that interests you, uh, specifically a lot of really focus, focusing on listening, building listening skills here. So if this is something um, you're interested in and or want to be uh, more connected with into a chant. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? You guys can email me or go to the, no, I mean, go to the, take it to the class page. And there was so one, maybe I, it. maybe I missed it. Yeah, well, we'll just see if anyone wants to ask a live class. In the future, we will have break off groups from this MOOC where we can turn people's mics on and things like that. But for now, we're not doing that. Have you asked the students to assess their own listening? Excellent question. Yeah. Actually, uh, connects to uh, what Jason West is going to talk about uh, tomorrow. Uh, go ahead, Crystal. Well, yeah, I mean, everything I talked to, to you about was about asking students to assess their own listening because every time they actually do something with the language they're listening to, they know that they are actually uh, successful in their listening and assessing it, you know? And so, yes, we can ask them, how do you feel about um, finding three pieces of information in what you just heard in this video clip or audio clip? And, uh, or ask them how many of these pieces of information did you get, you know? And uh, can you do that with a partner, by yourself? Depending on the age of the students and their motivation, uh, you can uh, do all kinds of different things, you know? I always like, when I can actually, as a teacher, also have an impression and when the student can self-assess them too. Mm. So I want yeah. to always know the teacher is my class, well, class time spent well, that my students learn something, you know. But the more developmentally able they are as adults or teenagers, middle schoolers, they can self-assess themselves, of course. Yeah, and the tools, uh, as we've seen in almost every class, including Crystal's, are, they're, they're just getting easier and easier to use. Uh, who was just Chuck Sandy was just gave us some. If you haven't seen that class, uh, def definitely want to check that out. Uh, obviously, Shelley Terrell's class, uh, 
also Jack Askew was talking about uh, specific tools that now are so easy to use for students to record their own listening, to evaluate themselves in groups to listen to each other, and then of course for the teacher uh, who has more experience usually uh, <laughs> to to offer his or her insight too. Can I, um, can, I, can I throw out one more tip? One thing I really like is um, you know, if students have um, electronic devices, digital devices available, as a, te as a teacher to outsource out of the classroom a lot of the listening activities uh, and let them uh, be used by the students either in class or outside of class on their own devices. You know. Yeah, yeah, and there's a chat going about own devices. Well, you know, I, I think. I'm, hmm? yeah. Go ahead. That's Please. also very important for people that need to hear things more often, so they are self-paced and they have the control of how often they can hear something in order to understand it. You know, it, it makes it less stressful, which is also one of Stephen Carson's tenets. You know, to say yeah. we should make sure that they don't have affective filters between them and the learning. You know, to make it most easy for them. And sometimes it means to hear it ten times instead of once. For some people. Oh, absolutely. That's what digital yeah. and, and if it's interesting enough, if it's engaging enough, they'll want to hear it multiple times. And I mean, to me, that, that's the bottom line here. And that's also what Krashen's talking about. It's not just the effective filter, it's the engagement and interest. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're at a time, don't you think, where, you know, if we talk about confiscating cell phones, well, I think that once stu students are engaged, you know, whether it's the old days where they're doodling in the margins or looking out the window or writing No. Service in school as a hotspot, and then I give every student a cell phone and use that to teach them. You know, mm -hmm. even in my own family, I raised a ch my child bilingually, and when she was little and she wanted to have a cell phone and, and writing on it, uh, I said only when you write every email and message to me in German. You know, and so then uh, we just made that our rule, and then German, you know, for for that to get her from, you know. So yeah. why don't you use the same principle in class, you know, and uh, and say, yeah, you can you can use your phone, but make it a learning activity then for the students, mm. you know, and with yeah, make it and a fun learning activity. Yeah, and, and I, <laughs> I, give, I give a lot of um, hints on my on my blog on how to record audio, you know, and so the teacher can record audio and then send it to the students, and they can use yeah. it for listening activities on their devices. And you can find all of us on my technology blog. Check out the yeah. blog. Check out check out her group. Uh, and I have a couple other questions here. Um, someone wants to know about using iPads in your classes. I'm, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to tell you the question. That's one. Uh, I won't forget all my. Another one is, what do you do with passive students in your class? This came earlier, and I jotted it down. I want to make sure I ask you because because you did mention um, getting them in circles and doing crazy stuff, and even the adults. Uh, that sounds great, but do you ever struggle uh, with getting passive students to be involved? Well, that goes back to my uh, beginning slide that says, "Get to know your students." You know, you may have a student that doesn't want to make a fool out of themselves. You know, and so maybe that student is uh, much better working with technology in, in more individual ways, you know, and allowing them ways to do that. And don't force them to make a fool out of themselves if they don't want to do it. And so, yeah. uh, as always, the very first is to be know your students and then to teach them where they are. And you, you'll find oftentimes that when you use technology, the very quiet people that are very muted in class, they're really loud on the chatter. You know, they're mm. really loud. <laughs> and oftentimes the opposite, you know, the class clowns uh, don't have their audience in writing, you know, 
the same way. So using a good mixture of both mm. uh, technology and, and uh, face to face activities and extending the classroom into the virtual one gives every student a chance to shine. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, 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 the possibilities with blended learning as far as reaching different personalities and learning styles, it's, it's just extraordinary. Um, and we should take advantage of that. I just want to add whether it's in the physical group or a blended group or virtual group uh, of students, you can assign roles. I hate saying it that way. You can, you can get students to you know, choose and adopt different roles that suit them better so if ever you know this is this is once you get to know the students as, as dr brody city then you get and uh, you put them in groups you can get into the habit of uh having one person do something that's more communicative directly or more use their outgoing personality their shy personality right yeah, yeah and they can for instance be the keeper or the secretary yes. or whatever if you use the collaborative grouping you know but but it's always good Going back to what we said before, you need to be purposeful in what you're doing. You need to do it for a reason. You should not just do things because they're fun, you know, but you do it because you want to reach a certain goal with your teaching, with that time. You need to know your students and where they are and where you want to go and then pick the right stuff to get everybody there. Wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of your philosophy too, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think the more that we connect with other teachers and learners around the world through technology, the more we are gravitating to one another, sharing some of these same ideas. So you know, I watch all these visions, and I'm thinking, you know, we have these distinct personalities as teachers and approaches and everything else, but these there are these very fundamental uh, notions that we believe in and we share. Uh, how about um, iPads? Do you use iPads? Somebody wants to know. Tablets or yeah, to, yeah, to me, iPads and tablets are oftentimes hailed as the one teaching. They're almost a silver bullet approach, you know. Like, oh, now we teach with iPads. Wow, what a change, you know. But to me, it's like good teaching is good teaching, and bad teaching is bad teaching. And a bad teacher with an yeah. iPad will still be a bad teacher, you know. However. When you have iPads and tablets available, you have some possibilities of things that you can do. You know, um, you have great internet, you have great uh, visuals, and you can do virtual field trips. You can do things. Mm. You can also do them on a um, laptop computer. You can also do them on your phone. So to me, it's yep. not the question iPad or not iPad. It's like having a digital extension to your classroom and be a good teacher. You know, exactly. I think, to, I think it's back to those roles in the groups again. So the roles also be defined somewhat by the type of technology people have or prefer. If they have no technology, they share with a partner and get to know that technology. And we are very close, I think, to, uh, you know, or the future is here now kind of thing where, you know, it, the school districts that traditionally, you know, spent money on textbooks, Right. It's, it's more just a transition to getting used to <laughs> what's coming more than it's a money issue in a lot of cases, because the prices for these textbooks, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, 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 it's, you know, so I, I think, yeah, technology at first seemed like we have to have this new budget and this this sort of, you know, uh, ex, ex, extra thing. But, you know, very soon. Uh, you know, you're not going to, people will bring their own devices, but those who don't have them, there will be devices for them. Yeah, so. and let, me, let me give you an example of what you just said, okay? So since I have a school-age child, um, you know, her math books are from 1990. For a child that's just over 10 years old, that's ancient, right? <laughs> I mean, that's like more than ancient. <laughs> So her, and also it doesn't jive anymore with the way we, what the teacher does is she cannot make new books, but she lets the kids, she teaches them with Khan Academy videos. Mm, okay? Great. So she gives them for each topic a list of Khan Academy uh, videos or other resources to go home. And that is uh, part of the learning activity and the resources they use is Khan Academy or any other resources and every teacher is catching on to that you know it doesn't matter foreign language staff or not we're all able to use such an incredible wealth worldwide of information 
with technology that the three justices really need to. But on the last note, I want to say that there's a book that is coming out in January. It's called Children and Languages Making the Match. And I came down in the class forum. Yeah. Um, it's not so make sure you it's it's in the class in the class page also when you're there we can continue because we only have a few minutes left. But keep going. Yeah. So I wanted to say that this book is like a fat book of hundreds and hundreds of pages of activity ideas. Kids and adults alike you can use it, even though it's it's listed as a kids teaching book. Mm. Um I was in charge of authoring um the main author of the technology chapter. And every activity in your classroom is interfaced with technology ideas. And that book is coming out in January. You know, Great. so I'm going to put it out because that may be of interest to all readers. Um, it, it's a book only with resources on how to teach. Lots of activities, you know. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> Good. Yeah, no, anyone out there who's worried about students not having enough money for technology or the or your schools not buying them yet or yourself not trained in it, feeling intimidated, don't worry. It's just going to get easier and easier. Uh, if you're interested now, uh, especially with the group we have here, I think this is a great time to experiment, to go and check out uh, these app, app applications, uh, these tools, uh, just get your feet wet. And and uh, but you know there's nothing to fear about the future. On the contrary, it's just going to get easier and easier for all of us. Uh, great suggestion here. Next session be about teaching every skill with technology. Uh, I'll give you a little hint since you're here. Probably the next MOOC in March. Since we're getting to the end here, it's probably going to focus on speaking. Um, and when I say listening pronunciation well yes but more on strategies for getting students to speak and using speaking because it's such an important one I think the tools are gonna keep coming I don't want to have a tools uh, MOOC so much as I want to keep looking at our skill areas and then within the skill areas obviously all the functions and the topics and everything so I think you know we're really gonna look at uh, we'll do vocabulary and we'll do a, a writing uh, probably a reading and writing uh, together will probably be the next one. We'll probably just go like that because I, I, I anticipate, um, as I'm seeing in this MOOC, people bringing in the technology that goes, uh, you know, works well with whatever the skill area is that, that we're focusing on. Good. And I hope you'll all be back for that one in March. We have just a couple minutes left. Dr. Crystal Naughty Brody, Crystal Pistol. <laughs> Just, just remember, I'm going on record here, permanent record, that it was you who introduced those uh, words to rhyme with your name. So when I'm using them out in social media land, nobody accuses me of being a little extreme or something. With that. Nobody <laughs> will be surprised. Like, people know me. I'm, I'm crazy. I love it. We're all crazy. If you're not crazy, get out of the MOOC. You're dismissed. <laughs> um, I'm glad you'll be here in March, Armando. Armando, you're amazing. Cloud yeah, an esteemed facilitator. Say goodbye, Dr. Nelly Deutsch, who is everything and everyone here. <laughs> Nevis in Italy. <laughs> Gordana in Serbia. Oh, it's going too fast for me. Virginia in Mexico. I love you too, Dr. Jigsaw. Uh, Olga in Mexico saying goodbye. Thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> Dr. Brody, it was great. Glad you were here again. Are you yeah, Vanessa, Vanessa Are you wasn't here. I'm sure Vanessa will be watching the recording. Peace singing? and respect to Vanessa. Are you singing? Sorry, go ahead. Say what? Are you singing before we leave? If you want me to sing, then I can. She wants me to rap, my man, Vanelli D said. I'll try to think of something coming right off the top of the head. Peace and respect to all of you who came. ELT Techniques teachers. Let's arrange ways that we can keep connecting into the future. Peace to you and yours. It's almost the holidays for certain people in the U.S. And I got some video for you. We're going to put it up soon. Stay hollow tuned. 20 seconds left. Yes, Merry Christmas. I'm asking you all what's on your wish list. Peace to Olga, Mohammed, and Claudia. Oh, my goodness. It's almost time to go. ELT Techniques teachers, we love you so. Peace and much respect.